Mr. Jim Kimo West, how you doing? How's it? Good to see you. For sure, man. It's been a long time. It's been a couple years since I last caught you on tour. <laughs> Grammy Award winning slack key guitarist. Hawaiian <laughs> slack key guitarist. Canadian born Jim Kimo West. That's right. Born in Toronto. That's right. Like that old blues song. I was born in Toronto. That's right. And you've even lived uh, for a bit where I'm from in Ottawa. That's right. And uh, I believe you've told me before, on tour, you, you've lived in what, London. Ontario. Yeah, I don't think we ever lived in London. We had relatives who lived in London, so I okay. spent a lot of time in London. Yeah, uh, you're a fan. Yeah, yeah, you have a brother who lives in the same city as me. So. Yeah, that's right. You're going, and now, now I'm here in sunny LA <laughs> at at your place. Look yeah, at this. look at that crazy, the wall of shame. The wall of shame. <laughs> so that's okay. So yeah, you... that's when I got uh, nominated for more guitar stories, and the other one's Mo Moku Mali. Yeah. Oh, it fell down. I gotta fix that. Um, I love this. This is like my meditation record. Yeah. I love that album. Loved and then, it. Um, Look at this. This is this is Jim on The Simpsons. That's right. My guitar for Weird Al. He was a character on and The so, Simpsons. And so it was Diana. She was a character on The Simpsons too. Oh, they put Diana in there too. Well, not on Al's show. A different show. Yeah, that's her there. Wow. <laughs> That's your wife on The Simpsons. Yeah, we're Look both on The Simpsons. And then the actual Grammy is over here. Grammy Award winner for more guitar <laughs> stories. I love it. Best New Age album of 2020. <laughs> A tune I wrote for the guitar tour in the fall I did in Europe, and it was we did it as a quartet. 
That's so awesome. I wrote all the parts out for everybody, and it so has a bunch bunch of different sections. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. I like the riff. That was yeah, awesome, man. The harmonics in it. Yeah. That's G-A-D. Okay. It's like, the top is like Dadgad. Yeah. D-G-A-D, but instead of D-A, it's Mm C-G. So these are down. It's like Dadgad, but these are lower to step, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if I can remember it. That's absolutely beautiful. is just such a more 3D experience, you know, with mics, you know. Now, if you're doing a really big mix with a lot of instruments and you just want the guitar to be, you know, a small element and in one place, mono's fine, but for what this kind of stuff, and especially solo guitar, you gotta have stereo, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I usually aim this one mic here, Some, and sometimes I use different mics, but this one I usually aim more or less at the 12th fret. You just don't want to get anywhere in front of the sound hole because it's way too bassy, you know. And then this one I kind of keep back, you know, usually usually somewhere like this around, you know, near the bridge, but sort of aiming in a little bit, you know. And then the more you aim it in, the more bass you get, you know. So what I usually do is I, I usually just um, mute one mic, just have one mic on, I have my, and just put my headphones on. Mm-hmm. And then I just, because you know, like one half an inch or something makes a huge difference, mm-hmm. you know. So you got to, and then when you, so if you're doing punch-ins, and you know picking it up at a certain place you got to make sure you're in the same place you know mm-hmm. that's why i hate to get up and go do something and come back because then i'll be you know i won't always get the right yeah you know, positioning so you want to you know like that this right here will sound different than this wow. see what i mean i'm moving like two inches and it'll sound different but you know so you, especially if you're punching in you want to make sure that it's really the same I've, one thing i was thinking i've never done it but i've always thought about getting laser pointers and putting them on there oh yeah you know, and then just have a little. That's crazy. You you know where that little yeah where it, where it hits. Then you know you're going to be in the right place. You know what I mean? Like those cheap laser pointers. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. But um, I got these yeah, locking the, tuners here. You can put them at tw- twenty. Like drop them down to a certain. Like a, See, I can, I can set this to this pitch. And I can set that to that pitch. So I go. A D minor seven tuning I've been using on a couple of things. I love that.
<laughs> it's fun tuning. Cute. Anyway, yeah. So um, basically, this is the uh, you know I can I can sit here and um, and it, this room can be super quiet, especially at night. Yeah, because just none of this. The computer doesn't make any. It's an older computer. It's one of those trash can Max down there. But it doesn't have a you know it doesn't make any noise. The fan doesn't have any fan, or if it does, it doesn't come on. And then instead of hard drives, these are all SSDs. This is an SSD dock. So four hard drives. That's actually something you use in video industry. But um, so I can just put different SSDs in there, and there's no you know there's no hard drive spinning noise. None of these interfaces. Nice. None of these things have fans. You know. So when I redid my studio, I was like, I don't want anything that makes any noise, you know, because I actually used to remote like a monitor and, and cables out into the living room years ago, and I used to record out there. See those nails again here. He's not using a pick. No, he's not are, aware here. Everything yeah. he's playing right now is with, with <laughs> you got acrylic on there, right? Yeah, yeah, I go to the nail salon. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> when he's doing the Hawaiian slack key solo stuff, he's not playing with Weird Al, he's not usually using a pick. Let's nah, listen to that. Nah. I, I could never. Well, the thing is, I used to, you know, years ago, I used to just use the flesh of my fingers. And, you know, it sounds fine, but what happens is your fingertips fingertips get a little rough mm -hmm. and you get this kind of the scratchy sound, sound, you know? So um, a friend of mine, guitar player, he was he kept telling me, Kimu, you got you to gotta try these acrylic nails. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go to a nail salon. <laughs> so one yeah. day he got me a gift certificate and he said... Uh, you're Trust coming me. with me, you know. So I went Trust there and was like, "Oh, this is weird," you know. And then, you know, I came back home and started playing. I was like, "I kind of like this." <laughs> I like it because you get and yeah, you know, and I haven't done it, but I need to refine them and shorten them a bit. But you, what you do is you you get them the shape you want, and then you start using progressively finer and finer uh, grit on your whatever you're using mm -hmm. so, and you get it to where the, it's super glassy to where they're so wow. smooth it's like glass and then you get pure sound yeah. oh, man, see how great. pure that is oh, yeah. so you get real bell like pure sound you had um you had similar nail in the "You Don't Love Me Anymore" video. With well, Al. those were like those, those were just like, made for effect. Yeah, that like was the, just the, the, the Freddie hands, Freddie fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, was that was just sort of a, a gag for the video. But. Yeah. Painted like new nose nails. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, yeah, it's just um, this is my you know it's a beat up guitar, but this is the one I use the most. It's got two. Uh, Sounds great, man. It's got two outputs. So I got the regular Taylor pickup output, and then I've got this Fishman Rare Earth pickup, which actually has a little mic in in there too, if you want to use it to. So that they I run separate outputs, and then um. For live when I'm doing my solo gigs, and I I, um, I used to have a pedal used to have a pedal board which I still have, which is nice, which is great for just a mono thing. Mm -hmm. But but what I do now is I use um, this was something I had on tour with Al as a spare. I use uh, I use Fractal Axe Effects Three with Al, and so I had this as a spare, which is a Fractal nice. FM Nine, and so. What I do is um, I run uh, both inputs. 
I, I run both my, my outputs of the guitar into the fractal and I've got a, um, I could show you if I, I can hook the laptop up and you can get a, a show you how it works, but essentially the two outputs have two different chains. So the, the Taylor pickup basically just goes through a little bit of compress, EQ and compression and then goes straight to the output. Whereas the magnetic pickup, it goes through the effects chain of whatever it may be. And um, so that goes, and then they're all com combined at the end. Um, so I've I spent time before this last tour I was on in the fall, uh, Internet Guitar Night in Europe. I spent time programming all the sounds I needed. So even with one preset, each preset can have eight scenes, eight different combinations of whatever's in that chain. Mm -hmm. And so usually I just need one preset. You know, I can pretty much get everything I want with that one preset. And I just switch scenes, you know. And um, I have a couple of expression pedals that I use um, for um, controlling volume. Um, sometimes you set one to control the amount of delay or the amount of reverb or effect or stuff like that, you know. So that's what I've been using lately, and um, it works flawlessly. I mean, I can set this, I can do my setup in like five minutes. You know, okay. I go to the stage and it's just like bang, 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 pull up, I'm done. All right, let's sound check, you know. <laughs> and then, and the sound engineers love it because it's all pre mixed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, all they have to do is turn up the faders. They don't, you know, and you know, sometimes they'll do a little EQ for the room, but they will, um, you know, they're like, great, you know, I don't have to do anything, you know, it's, you know. Check this out here. We got his hallway presented to Jim Kimo West. This is from the 1985 album with Weird Al. Dare to be stupid was a Weird Al's breakthrough album. Yeah. So cool. Presented to him by Scotty Brothers. Wow. Dare to be stupid. Compact disc and cassette. It's pretty cool. We got Alapalooza here from I think 92 or 3. Jurassic Park parody. I love that disc. Still have mine. These are all, each band member got them. One of the longest standing bands of all time since 1983. This is the second album in 3D. It's one of my favorites. Look at this. Off the deep end. Got that on shirt. And I've got the rare cassette as well. 500,000 copies of the cassette and CD. Yeah, each band member, Steve J, Bermuda, Al, and Jim all dedicated right to them. Their name right on there. Alapalooza, more than 50,000 units. Wow. That's awesome. RIA, RIAA certified gold video award. The very first Weird Al album here, 1983, self titled. Only 500,000 copies? I bought it. One of my favorite albums here came out the year I was born, even worse. And I've seen them do, I've seen uh, uh, Jim and the band do pretty much most of the songs on most of the albums live at this point. Especially this one came out the year I was born, 88. Look at this. This is Al from 1999, presented to Jim West by the directors of Zomba Records in Australia. In recognition of the outstanding achievement of attaining 35,000 plus in gold sales. Running with Scissors, one of Al's best selling records right there. That one did well, his two best selling records. Bad hair day as well, of course this is for our video collection that they had made back in the 90s. So more than 25,000 units of that. The one for Alapalooza. This was presented in January '94. So if I go like this, and another one for Off the Deep End. So cool. March '95. Now that album came out in '92, I think. 100,000 units. Wow. One of his most well-known records. That's the disc of Bad Hair Day. Oh look. He's got one of those straight out of Lynn, straight out of Linwood, hundred dollar bills, Al being all gangster. Yeah, this is one of their best selling records, Bad Hair Day. This is Jim's award. 
Scotty Brothers and Attic Records, 100,000 units, which they sold way more than that. That was in June 96. It was doing that, so. Again, in January 98, years after this album came out, still receiving awards, certified double Canadian platinum. Double Canadian platinum. I bought one. I bought one. I remember they used to have a, a warning on this record at the record store that said, no, this is not the Jurassic Park soundtrack. Look at this. Al with his Coolio look. With that bad hair day. So, to commemorate the RIAA multi-platinum certification of more than two, 200,000 copies. Oh, it's two million. Sorry, I read that wrong. It was two million. I was, I was looking at this picture of Al and the guys right here, dressed, dressed as Amishmen. There's uh, Bermuda, as Jim right there, with his long hair. Al and Steve J. Wow, that's cool. Wow. Very cool. And down here, of course, straight out of Linwood, was this Weird Al's 2006 album. Jim did some amazing work on that. Look at that gold record. Presented to Jim West to commemorate RIAA certified gold sales of more than 500,000 copies of the Volcano Entertainment 3 compact disc. Straight out of Linwood. That's too cool, man. Right back in his studio now. I'm sure everybody's heard of this record. 1999's Running With Scissors. One of Al's best-selling albums. This was Jim's reward. Presented for more than 500,000 copies sold. And sold way more than that. Just like the other ones. Here's the classic picture of the band from inside the album. There's Jim right here. Jim, there's Al, Steve, and Bermuda with some scissors in his forehead. They yeah, sold a lot of copies of Running With Scissors. Two of these. Wow. Okay, this is for the... Million copies. One million copies of Running with Scissors. Who didn't have that record or cassette? Everybody had that album. There's the disc. There's Jim, Eye Patch, <laughs> and this up here is actually in recognition for his participation as a musician for the 2003 album Poodle Hat in the category of Best Comedy Album. Let's do it with the shimmer, let's try that.
I've never done it with a shimmer before. It's kind of <laughs> freaky. Awesome. I sound good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, for that kind of stuff, I prefer a pick. But how often do the nails break? These don't break much unless I'm doing some, you know, work in the yard or gardening or something. If I whack it or something, they're pretty strong. You remember which one uh, it was? Remember when we were in Calgary before the show and you uh, you had to get some reparations? Oh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, well, the thing is, if, Maybe if the thumb one. When, my, when I used to have regular nails, um, they wouldn't be this long, but I would. The problem is if one broke, then you have a different sound. You know, you uh -huh. have a nail sound on, th on th two, three fingers and a, and a flesh sound on the other, you know, so it's real mm -hmm. yeah. inconsistent, you know, but. It sounds great, man. Anyway, this is, a, this is, yeah, this is a cool thing, this Moog guitar. I use it a lot in, in place of keyboard pads. You know, just, you know. Yeah, and I can, yeah. I can use it, you know, even without an effect, just totally dry. I can use it, use it, you know, and just. Yeah. Addictive. <laughs> yeah. So I was saying, this is a Moog guitar. It's not a synthesizer. It's it's a it works like a normal guitar. Let me just take off that. I'll just put that you know, regular preset here. But it's got electromagnets built into the body, which you can't see. And if I turn this knob up, it adds power to the electromagnet. So now. Instead of that, I do this and it goes. Huh. And see, even if I turn the volume down, you can hear the strings yeah. right. Because it's electromagnet. And then this pedal sweeps the power between the two magnets. So you get different harmonics. So you can when you do a solo, when your note you can hold a note and it'll last forever. Some Albuquerque licks. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So intricate.
The, uh, play the intro riff to UHF. UHF. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's in a. Um, jeez, I have to have to remember it. You know, it's one of those things. It's like once once I get into the tour, of course mm -hmm. I you know I remember. It's there, but then yeah, once well, you would just take some it's time definitely off. Definitely like you know having to remember remember your own riffs. <laughs> I get there with me. better than Mark Knopfler's. I, I love the heavier, weird Al version. It's not the right sound, but it's, um, that's sort of the general idea. <laughs> Look at you, people. Listen to my story. Little story about a man named Jed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's this is just the Mo guitar. It's like that's amazing. Sounds pretty good. It's man. a pretty cool like, thing. And I can so say cool. I mostly use it for. Um, <clears throat> I mostly use it for, uh, you know, like pads, <laughs> pad type sounds and stuff like that. And this is like a giant reverb, like, like. Bunch of different presets. This one is kind of fun.
It's one of my tunings, it's a, uh, it has two G strings. It has, um, these, these are the same, same note. It's like, um, So you get like a... the thing from the mandatory fun tour with the whole band, Al at the end. It's Ruben, the keyboardist. It's Jim. There's Bermuda the drummer, Steve, and Al. Longest standing original band of all time. Band together, right here. Ruben, Jim, Bermuda, Steve, and Al. Weird Al. These rare, you don't love me anymore, cassette singles. Jim and Al, just like you see them in the video for You Don't Love Me Anymore. The Jim and Al. It looks like I Was Only Kidding was the B-side. It's not a live debut of that. Got a little Funko Pop of Al here. We got, wow, that's an old one, like Dare to be Stupid type era. And we got uh, Carbonite Freeze, of course. It's got a guitar. <laughs> Very cool. This is, of course, from the recent motion picture, Daniel Radcliffe. And this is the album, because they did a bunch of new music for this. You Don't Know Anything. Now You Know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Still don't have this soundtrack. But. Oh, and this is actually an alternate. Look at this, Look at this rare. Okay, it's a tribute. I thought it was a. So this is, this is actually tribute to Weird Al. Huh. Hulk Apocalypse. There's a take on a Weird Al's 2011 album, Alpocalypse. That's a similar cover. These are people covering. Guys, dudes, wow! Look at this. The old, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I've always wondered what was in the band member's collection. It's got the permanent record owl book, the illustrated owl. Oh my god, an old VHS of the complete owl, which I have on DVD. This is an original 80s copy. Weird Owl Live from 99 on VHS. The Alapalooza videos. Wow, this is cool stuff. I'd be losing it if I saw this in a store. Of course, singles. Wow. Night Santa went crazy single. Ha, this was a good, cool uh, compilation. This was uh, a food album right here. This is one I play a lot. All of Al's food songs. 
And this then little what thing you right do here. Is, um, these, My goodness. These are three this is so cool. The okay. so in, in the oh, here's here's ball, Al's book. This is Al's book. Down, it's Al's children's book. Stacked. When I grow so up, down, they're, they're in Al's also a best-selling author. And then when they're up, they can either be single coil. Illustrations by Wes Hargis. Is there a single cassette? Yeah. Gump. Gump Amish Paradise. Oh my god. An original polka party cassette. I totally need this for my collection. This is nuts. This is an authentic polka party 80s cassette. The 1986 album, Polka Party. Really so cool. Here, the definitive Al box set oh, wow. is called Squeeze Box, so Complete Works of Al Yankovic. This is the book that comes with it. With that one wow. Very cool. Yeah. And the Floyd is, um, it's been replaced Man, there's so much to look at in here. The everything you know is wrong. One hour radio special. Wow. But it came from the Weird Al VIP. Oh yeah, I had got one of those packages. I had the Dare to be Stupid watch. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. I gave mine to Cat, actually. You know Cat. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You can have that. Cool. Heck yeah. He's giving me one of these rare, rare cassette yeah, I'll, singles. I'll show you another one. Let's put this one back. I'll awesome. Go. I'll yeah. show you one other one. I've got. I'm probably gonna see. Mind blown being in here. One of my favorite guitarists of all time. You know how many of these on tour? These are like your, your go-to tour. These two tour and guitars. a telly, and then I have a... My favorite Ibanez, band. Yeah. Eh, perhaps um, after watching this video, you'll understand why. Old Al TV tapes from 1996. Everybody remembers those. VH1 behind the music of Weird Al, parts one and two. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, road reports. It's awesome. I want that tape. We were out at Orange County Fair on the old Simpsons tapes. That's right. Jim's actually been a character on the Simpsons. Everybody in Al has been on the Simpsons. Wow. So this was bought in Toronto, I believe, where you're from, at uh, all the strings attached to her in Toronto. This is actually, so I've worn this everywhere, Jim, on tour, just everywhere, coast to coast, and it's this, this the lining in this is wow. the best. You can recommend to Al, use these linings in the hoodie. It's great if you have long hair, your hair doesn't bunch up. Well, this just became one of my favorite hoodies. Very cool. Very durable. It's held up. It's basically the same electronic, so that's why it's you know it's a backup to the other yeah. one. There's Jim right there. But they're there. custom. They're all custom it reminds made. Me of Eddie Van Halen, like Van Hagar era. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a nice guitars. One. But they're um, super versatile, and um, so it's like you know I said it's like you know it basically gets pretty much the same sound as the, as my main one. And that way, um, you know, if something happened and I just needed to switch guitars for some reason or other, I've got that one and can pretty much get me through the show with this, all the same settings, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's got a really good reverb, this Strymon Big Sky. And then this is a plus pedal, so I can actually hit a chord and hold that down and it sustains and I can play on top of it. Oh, wow. And it's got a um, looper, um, echo, this is a compressor. And then this is a smart, kind of a smart octave. I have an octave setting in here, but this one, you can set it so that it, um, it's OC5, you can set it so that it, uh, it only gives you an octave on the lowest note of your chord. So I can be playing some stuff and only the low notes get the octave yeah. while the high stays clean. You know? I wish this had that. That's, That's cool. Like a super cool thing. But this is, but this is a good pedal board too. And if you just, you know, if I, if I just added up, some overdrive to it, it could be an electric pedal board too, you know, it just wouldn't take much if I yeah. needed to do that, you know. But, um, all that and all a bunch of stuff. I have so many guitars, I got like, I went to an inventory and it's like, I got like 60 guitars. Like, I got the actual, like 60 uh, guitars. your actual setup for uh, <clears throat> Weird Owls here under a cover, I guess, huh? 
Well, this, now, th th what I use with Al is, the last tour is Axe FX3, which is in the locker. I don't have it with me here. Okay. But it's it's this, like it, like this Axe FX here, Fractal Axe FX, which is really the state-of-the-art digital stuff. That's what at the Edge uses, and it's Steve Vai and people. Nice. But it's, this is the previous version, XL2+, Plus, and the switcher is, is this, you know, and then you have a couple of pedals. But, um... That's what I use with Al is Axe FX. You know, it just goes direct. I plug right into it, it goes direct to the PA, you know. So there's no signal the signal chain is the guitar into the Axe FX, mm -hmm. Axe FX to the PA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like like that basement is like it looks like it just came out of the shop. It's like mint wow. condition. This of course is beat up but it sounds amazing. The this fifty nine, these are tweeds, you know, these are like yeah. legendary amps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I have a couple of acoustic amps that I use, you know, when I'm doing small gigs, like the Henriksen, which is a really great little, it's like, it's a fantastic, um, these are great amps, they're made in Colorado, it's called a Bud, and you can get so much sound out of this thing, it's so little, but you can get so much, it's so big sounding, and you know, you can carry it on the plane and put it in the overhead, nice. you know? but it's a wow. Bud, and it's got the bass port in the bottom, but these things are amazing. Huh. And they were originally designed as a for like jazz guitar originally, which are great. They're great for that, but they're great for acoustics. Like all the score and everything for even like the Weird Al show. Oh, uh, I didn't do all of it. I did some some of it. Yeah, I did some of it. Um, like when they're doing that, like the action figure ads, aren't those? Like yeah, huge? yeah. What they call you know the sort of specialized segments. I did a lot of that. Yeah. Okay. And I couldn't do the actual underscore because we went on tour at that point and somebody mm. else had to do it because it was just you know couldn't really do it from the road you know i i don't have that i have that music somewhere archived somewhere you know i've got wow. so much stuff that i've done over the years you know but i um i have so many um you know pieces that i've done you know like for for film and tv like cartoon shows most of them Example of the kind of stuff you do for cartoon shows. Yeah, it's awesome. All done by him. Good on the keys. Yeah, it's, you know, it's all played with samples. You know? A lot of people who might be watching might not know, even when he plays with Weird Al, he does more than just guitar. He does, uh, what well, you do the sampling on uh, Amish Paradise. I do a lot of the keyboard parts, yeah, the on the records, parts, yeah. yeah. Like, White and Nerdy is all me, mm -hmm. and Amish Paradise, and stuff like that. Because even when you guys do White and Nerdy live, you and Steve just do the backup, uh, Yeah. keep Al afloat throughout the track, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've done a lot of um, music for different things, you know, um... I even did um, a record for uh, um, a couple records for this company, CMH, where they wanted me to do Hawaiian versions of of different bands, like the Eagles was one of them, and, and Sublime was another one, you know? Hey, you've done a lot of great covers. You did a great one of Imagine, uh, yep, Little yeah. Grass Shack, <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, Hula Blues. Yeah, yeah, a lot of covers on, on my records for sure. Yeah. Cool seeing you do Hula Blues live in Toronto there. We so we had a, we saw a Weird Al gig. I, mean, I got to it was the Vanity Tour, so I got to see songs for the first time that night, like Nature Trail to Hell. We were talking about that before the show. Right, right, right. And then you and Steve played at the opposite end of Toronto after. Right. That, that was the that's one of the most right. incredible nights of my life. Yeah, there. that's right. We played that gig in Toronto, yeah. You being right. from Toronto, that was uh, actually your first solo gig in Toronto. It right? was, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, absolutely. That was a good night, man. You and Steve nailed it. And I mean, yeah. like I said, after hearing all these songs the first time, like Airline Amy, who do you think I was watching? I was yeah. waiting for those guitar fills, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I only, I did play near Ottawa once many years ago. Um, uh, it wasn't right in Ottawa, but it was close to there. It was, um, what was that place called? I had a name of an animal on it. Um, can't think of the name of it anyway. I did play a gig in, in, you know, near Ottawa many years ago. It just happened to be there, and I, I think I was up there visiting family, and I just thought, oh, I'll book a gig, you know. Um, on this next tour we do next year, I might, I might try and book solo gigs, you know, on days off. I haven't done that in the last couple of tours because we've been so busy, you know, it's like, 
I don't yeah. I need my day off you know <laughs> yeah. when I was your age uh, I guess the last gig I saw you guys play was Toronto uh, mm. in 2022 I went to both nights in Toronto mm -hmm. we, we were together in Ottawa there and then you played Toronto it was my first time getting to hear uh, when I was your age. Oh, yeah. That last. was always fun to play, yeah. It was nice to have seen uh, you and the guys about 20-some-odd times and still getting to hear tracks that I've never heard live, <laughs> finally. Like, when that moment comes, you're like, yeah. whoa. Like, yes. Getting to hear a few songs I haven't heard somehow yet. Yeah, I mean, on those tours, those vanity tours, there were, I mean really good most of those songs we'd never played live before it was mm -hmm. a new thing so it's fun it was fun and, you know it was hard to remember what you played when you recorded them because it was you know oh, most bet, of them go yeah. back you know but you but signed it was all super those fun man. it was too. super fun to play them all and um and you know they're all they're good songs Al's a good songwriter it's not like they're they're duds you know they were all fun we were we, we, we us hardcore fans have been asking you for years on every tour why don't you play uhf yeah, or generic yeah. blues and do like happy birthday Oh, yeah. I'm so sick of you. Yeah, so on that first van, that was the first Vanity Tour, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because there were some of those songs didn't make it to the next Vanity Tour. We, mm -hmm. now, you know, we did all these... That's right, I saw the debut of I Was Only Kidding in Montreal, and I don't think it was on the second yeah, uh, yeah, Al tour. Yeah, Al dropped some of those. You know, he decided to not have as many in rotation, you know. Well, I was going to say, that guitar there, I, I played that with Al. Played yeah, that. I recognize that. Yeah. Yeah, I need to... I'm going to take it to Ibanez and have him, um, you know... Fix it up. I mean, it's not bad. It I just love needs the old to be. Look. Yeah, it's, tell, a, you know, it's all it's mahogany and Nico Pro, and I forget who makes this one. It's uh, Joe, Joe Barden or something. Is that you know? They're all like boutique pickups I yeah. put in there, but it's a great guitar. It sounds really good. And this is one I got. Guybenes gave me two or three guitars back in the '90s. So that's where this came from. And the body is like really, it's really th small. Nearly thin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I have a new Ibanez. It's in the locker, but it's a really nice one, uh, a new version. Ibanez but, are good. I got it. But they Ibanez said, hey, man, they said, just bring it in and we'll totally, you know, redo it and get it all, like, working super great. So I'm going to talk to them next week and probably go up there next week and take it into them. And the story is that in the early 80s, um, they were making these basically copies of Fenders, and Fender was kind of going to shut them down. Mm -hmm. But Fender was making really crappy guitars at that time and when they went over to the factory and they saw what kind of work they were doing they were just like oh my god these guys are making better they're doing <laughs> our guitars better than we do right so they decided to create fender japan oh and so they would be fender but they would be made at that factory and they would you know split the money or whatever you know so this was actually said fernandez and it was just a decal i just rubbed it off and i put the I was able to get the Fender logo mm -hmm. put on there, but it's a Fernandez, but it's for every purpose. Every it's it sounds look at the solid. Look at that one piece maple neck solid. It's like look at that, that and that's quality. Beautiful. I've got an Aria that's like quite similar. And a slab rosewood board. I mean that's a nice slab of rosewood. Mm -hmm. I love beautiful those, um, alder love body. Um, thing sounds incredible. It's like a great, really great sounding instrument. And um, I just I just need to get the um, the nut cleaned out to where the, it's where the tremolo is. This right now it's not it's a lot it's not it's only going down. You but you can turn it into floating if you okay. want. You know. You've got a papaya tree. Yeah, man. Wow. It's making lots of papayas. That's amazing, man. Just create a fruit salad right in your backyard. This you is all lemons. like greens right now, like lettuces, chard. These are peas. Kale, um, bok choy over there. I got some potatoes coming up. And you got your orange tree. Yeah. <laughs> you grow bananas, lemons. Yeah. It's an orange tree. It's just, you know, I mean, not used to this in can see You don't see anything like this in Canada. Uh, we only Meyer, have dead citrus. Meyer lemons. <laughs> Look at these. Lemons. Made from the yard. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, man. Yeah. Smell like Thai food. Oh, uh, wow. Smell that. Oh, yeah. It it's, they use it in like the coconut soup yeah. and the things like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's called a kaffir lime. 
lemon and lime trees. I don't think I've had, I think this is actually the first time I've seen a lime tree. Really? They, they, yeah, they got lemon trees everywhere, but I never see the green ones. Yeah, yeah, these are these are limes. I mean, when they get oh. really ripe, they turn yellow. Like you see one there that's really yellow, but, but they're they're limes. You also have part-time residents in Hawaii. Yeah. Let's I'm see how much fruit you have going on out there. I'm going back in uh, March for a while, but yeah, I like to grow stuff. This is a. Awesome nectarine tree but it's a stone fruit so you know it's dormant right now but yeah it'll start making it's starting to make buds already it's going to come to life pretty soon i got to fertilize it i've definitely never seen a nectarine tree yeah i used to have a big apricot tree but it got wow. kind of sick and i had to cut it down but yeah anyway the bananas right now it's hard to hard to this is one little tiny stuff here oh so that's where it gets bananas but I'm going to fertilize it. Um, this time of year is when you start fertilizing, so I'm going to fertilize it. And I'll, I get usually like six or seven stalks a year. I get some stalks of bananas. I've Incredible. got a freezer full of bananas. Can you plant these? Yeah, I mean, I bought it as one plant this big. Uh -huh. And now it's like, you know, <laughs> I know. it's they, They're kind of invasive. You know? Yeah. I'm but yeah, um, really appreciate you hooking me up with this single. Like, oh that's yeah, right yeah, out. yeah. It's so cool. Usually, I just you know, I mean, if I have extras, I'm having to give it away. Do you have a? Um, do you want a? Uh, Check out his new album you got, here. You guys have a turntables by any chance, or like vinyl? Yeah, I got, I got, I got a, I got a vinyl player. Yeah. I'll give you a copy of the. Uh, you can grab a couple. Oh, of we're gonna get a vinyl too. Look at that. With Aloha. So check this out. This is his most recent album of Wooden Spirit, American Guitar Stories. Go check out the other albums. There's uh, Slot Chemo West. There's, uh, of course, the first Guitar Stories. There's more Guitar Stories. This one here. Yeah. I've got lots of these. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, that's cool. More vinyl just it's it's giving us a vinyl. This yeah, is him, yeah. and Ken, uh, him and Ken Emerson. Yeah, they've, the, they've jammed together for a long time. They do shows together. Yeah. This is their record, Slackers in Paradise. Slack and steel guitar duets. This is awesome. Never heard guitar playing like you hear from these guys. It's incredible. This is too cool. All right. Check out Jim Chemo West. Please like, please subscribe. And if you're new here... Subscribe and I'll let you know when a new episode goes up. You never know what you may be missing here on the Mr. Thrash Show. We're going to go hang out with Jim a little more, grab some dinner, and go check out his solo albums. Or you can listen to his stuff with Weird Al. Anytime you hear guitar, Weird Al, that's Jim Chemo West. Thanks again, Jim. Sure, you're welcome. Appreciate yeah, you're it, man. Welcome. I was, gonna, I was telling Jesse that Weird Al is on this record. You did Al does some stuff on it? Well, he plays accordion on this track, the Slack, Slack Key Polka. Slack Key Polka. Okay. <laughs> nice. Slack Key Polka. <laughs> yeah. It's a really cool tune, actually. and uh, But, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people are like, Polka, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, they might it just totally not get works. it. It totally works, but... Uh, <laughs> Some people just don't get I, it. Right? I just, it's just hard to get people on board with it. You know, yeah. like, wait a minute, I don't want to listen to my polka again. You know? Jim, <laughs> Jim's had to do an alternative polka, polka <laughs> your eyes out, polka's on 45. He's been hooked on polkas. He's had oh, polka man. power, polka rama. Yeah. Did I miss any? Uh, hot rocks polka. Hot rocks polka, though. All, all Rolling Stones polka. Yeah, right. They've done it all. They've done it all. Thanks again, everybody. Polka your eyes out. Polka your eyes out, yeah. That's the best one. Polka your <laughs> eyes out. Mm, yeah. What was the one on Mandatory Fun? Uh, I don't know. Was there one on Mandatory Fun? There was. Um, dang, I want to close it out with remembering that. Yeah. Mandatory yeah, yeah. Fun yeah, was... Yeah. Now that's what I call polka. Yeah, that's right. Now that's what I call polka. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thanks again, Jim. You're Appreciate welcome. it, man. Yeah, thanks for coming by, you guys. It's always fun to sit around and pull out guitars. And... Oh, man. It's great. <laughs> it's fun. Please check out www.jimkemowest.com. For tour info, merch, albums, and all news related to Jim Chemo West.